I'm in Shenandoah River State Park, I believe it's what it's called. It's uh, Andy Guest State Park is another name for it. And I thought that I would do something a bit different today. And uh, what we're doing is we're shooting film. But we're not just shooting film. Uh, this camera is a very old camera. It's, it was manufactured starting in 1968. It's a Konica Auto Reflex T. This was the first commercial camera available to the public at a reasonable price that had a built-in exposure meter and an auto exposure setting. In other words, you could basically program mode so that the, the uh, camera would set your aperture and all of that if you wanted it to. Uh, when I got this camera, the meter was not working in it. So the camera's no good, right? Actually, no, there's a method. There are a couple of different methods. One thing that you could do is get a light meter. But a lot of times in landscape situations, light meters don't really do you any good. Uh, because, you know, say, say instead of this little creek here, you know, I'm trying to photograph something that's all the way across a river. Well, I can't take that light meter way across the river and hold it up against the subject that I want to record. So there has to be a, another method for that. And the method is one that was developed a long time ago, uh, probably way long before I was born. And it's a method for judging uh, daylight exposure. And it's called the Sunny 16 rule. And I understand it. You have to understand your exposure triangle and uh, if you're not familiar with what that is then you need to look it up but it's basically your ISO or the sensitivity to light that uh, your camera has or more specifically with film cameras film has aperture or f-stop and shutter speed and the idea is that on a bright sunny day with no clouds in the sky, the aperture would be f16. And then as you progress to uh, lesser and lesser light, you would open up the aperture correspondingly to maintain exposure. Or in cases of like bright uh, snow, or bright sand, you might want to close the aperture just a little bit more. And uh, the way that works, the method that they figured out was your film speed and your shutter speed would be locked. And what I mean by that, in the days of film, by the way, this works for uh, digital SLRs as well. But in the days of film, you had film speed, shutter, and aperture. Now today, we have ISO, shutter speed and aperture, and the film speed was called ISO back then too, and ASA, and, and DIN, and, but anyway, uh, today, ISO is adjustable in the digital cameras. But during film era, what you did you, was you, you picked a particular speed of film. And that speed corresponded to uh, how much sensitivity the film had to light. So a 100 speed film would have a certain sensitivity to light. And the next up would be a 200 speed film that would have twice the sensitivity. And next up to that would be the 400 speed film and that would have four times the sensitivity of uh, 100 speed. And two times the sensitivity of 200 speed and you went on and on and on and the photographer picked the uh, speed of his film his or her film to match the situation that they were going to be in uh, the difference was that you could not 
change that. Once you picked an ISO or a film speed, it was not variable. It was fixed until you were done with this roll of film. Uh, modern DSLs, like I said, you can adjust that, but in film you could not. So the method simply explained is that you pick a film speed. In this case, I'm using a Superior 400 Fujifilm film. And it's a 400 speed film. So I picked my film speed 400, okay? My shutter speed matches as close as I can the film speed. In this case, my shutter speed is at 500 because I don't have a 400. The closest I have is 500. Okay, and then those never move. Once my film speed and my shutter speed uh, are set, they don't move. And then I look at the light around me. And if it's a bright sunny day with no clouds in the sky, that would be an aperture of f16. If it's a fairly cloudy day like it is today, that might be an aperture of f11 or f8. Uh, if I was in a shady situation or a dark situation, or the like in this case, if you look at what I'm going to be photographing, that's a darker area than where I'm standing right now. I've got good light here, probably f11, f8. And that's darker. Okay, so I'm setting my aperture for that light because that's what I'm photographing. But you just adjust according to what your light situation is. It takes a little bit of time to learn, but it will teach you how your shutter, your film, your ISO, and your aperture work together, particularly aperture and shutter speed, which is what uh, is the two main things that we adjust all the time in a manual mode situation. So let me go ahead and mount this camera. All right, now, if you look at this, I don't know if you can see it all, but I've got a little creek running through here, and I've got two little vines that are coming down. Uh, I can't move them, can't get them out of the way. If I walk over in that, I'm gonna leave footprints all over the place. It's not gonna look good for the photograph. So I'm gonna leave them there and I'm gonna shoot between them. And my focus point is about halfway between where I'm at and that log that slips over top of the creek there. And if I look at the light over there, this light is probably about a f11, maybe f8. So if I look at that light, that's going to be either an f8 or maybe 5.6, f4, something like that. So I'm going to guess f8, and I'm going to take one shot. Stand by. All right. That was at F5, 6. I forgot and didn't change it. I'm going to go to F8. And the reason I'm going to do that, I'm going to take another photograph. And the reason is that I'm doing what's known as bracketing. If I'm not, let's let whatever that is pass by. This is a state park. There are other people here besides me. Anyway, I took a shot at f5.6 but I'm not sure of that light so I'm going to use a technique called bracketing excuse me and what that is is I'm gonna I took a picture at what I thought was the right exposure and now because I'm not sure of that light I'm going to close up the aperture just a little bit, F8. I'm going to take a second shot. All 
All right. So what if I don't want F8? What if I want F16, which is pretty much what I want? Well, if you understand, I'm going to put this on F16 now. If you understand the relationship between shutter speed and aperture, then you can do all sorts of things. Sunny 16 says that's F8, F5, 6, something like that, okay? And F, uh, uh, but different apertures give you different depths of field, different looks, different sharpness in different areas of the photograph, that kind of thing. So let's look at shutter speed and aperture a bit. Now on this camera, I have, and I'll just start at shutter, the shutter speed of 125. It goes from uh, one. Uh, second all the way to one one thousandth of a second and the way it works is the lower the shutter speed the more light hits the film because the shutter is open longer and the higher the speed of the shutter the less light will hit the film because the shutter is open less so and just like aperture I'm on uh, one five hundredth of a second of shutter speed, okay? If I want to do F16 instead of say F5, 6, then I would close up my aperture or my shutter, I'd close up my aperture, F16, but I would open up my shutter speed the same amount. So F16, F11, F8. So there's two stops of light. In other words, each click of the aperture or each click of the shutter speed one way or another is a stop. So I'm at 1 one twenty-fifth, and I'm at, one, at F16. And that is the same as 1 500th at F8. So I'm going to take another shot. I need to advance the film. It's like a ditzy. I keep forgetting that because I shoot too much digital. All right. So let's go. What if I want five F five point six? Well, I want the light of F five point six, but I want the shutter speed of F sixteen. I would move down one more click because it's F16, F11, F8, F5.6. So 500, 125th, 60th of a second. Let's try it. And that kind of method allows me, we'll put it back on 500th, a 500th of a second, to get the light that I want and the aperture I want. And I don't have to stick to that uh, 1 500th of a second and F16. I can move back and forth depending on the light and get whatever it is that I want out of it. But this method will uh, teach you the relationship between your shutter speed and the aperture in your lens and you can apply this in a digital camera as well. The DSLRs work with this method. The thing that you have to remember though is that the meters in cameras, your DSLR and all, that's a, a reflective reading. In other words, if you point your DSLR at someone, the meter is reading the light that's reflected back off of whatever it is you're pointed at. That's why if you shift your uh, camera just a little bit on a DSLR, you'll see that meter move an awful lot because it's getting reflections off the different things that you're pointing the focus point at. This method is ambient light. So if you use this in a camera that has a meter, 
The meter's going to do all kind of weird stuff. You have to learn to ignore it if you use this method. But it's worth investigating and worth playing with and learning because uh, it'll teach you. So there's another shot I want to take while I'm here. If you look, you won't be able to see, but I can see. The creek that I just shot runs up under here, runs up under these uh, trunks that are laying across here. There's a, some rocks. The water pools up just a little bit by a little tree there. But you can't really see it unless you're looking over this rock right there. I can see it, and I want to shoot that. So I've got my camera set up, but I want this at f3. Point, I want this at f16, but the light is about uh, appropriate for like f3.5 or f4. So what I did, I have it on f16, and understanding the basics of shutter and aperture, the way they work together, from f16 to f4 is 11, 8, 5.6, f4. That's four stops, right? So we were at 500, and we went from 500 on the shutter speed. I'm, I'm at f16 on the f-stop. Instead of going down to f4 or f3.5, I'm at f16 where I want to be uh, aperture wise, but I came from 500 to 250, 125, 60, and I'm at 1 30th of a second. 1 30th of a second at f16 is the same as uh, f4 or 3.5, they're so close that it don't really matter, at 1 30th of a second. So I'm going to take that shot, and I, I messed up because what I want to do If I have the film left, I'm almost at the end of this roll. I want to set a timer. Because that's a slow shutter speed. There it is. Now. I want to take a picture with just a little bit less light coming in to bracket. So I'm going to go up to a 60th of a second. And I'm going to use the timer again. Well, my camera timed out for recording, so I don't have, know how much of it is of that that you got. But hopefully you got the gist and an understanding of the Sunny 16 rule and how it helps you understand the relationship between the shutter speed and the aperture and how you can learn to adjust them both with that rule, you, using that rule and get good daylight exposures in whatever situation it is that you're in. Bless you. I'll talk to you later.